Hello there, my name is Idris, and in this video I'm going to show you new tips and tricks for hard surface sculpting inside of ZBrush Core 2021. I recommend that you watch my previous videos on hard surface sculpting inside of ZBrush Core to get you up to speed if you haven't already. I'll have a link in the description so you can pause now and go watch them. I'll wait. Okay, so since uh, most of you didn't listen, I'll do a quick summary of the main trick we'll be using to make our hard surface models. But first, let's talk about the main issue with our previous approach before we can talk about how we can fix it. So the entire workflow revolves around using Dynamesh and performing Boolean operations to make our hard surface sculpts. Um, the issue is that in order for this to work, we need a lot of geometry. And the more subtools you have, the larger the file size become, the harder it is on your computer. And I believe there's a hard cap on the number of polygons you can have inside of ZBrush Core. So that might be an issue as well. So let's try and solve that with the new features introduced inside of ZBrush Core 2021. Well, first, a little refresher of how we go about uh, creating our hard surface sculpting um, sculptures inside of uh, ZBrush Core. So we'll pick a cube and we're going to start and try and create something, a generic hard uh, model. So let's take our cube and then we're going to duplicate the subtool a couple of times because we're, we're going to use that later. We're gonna define our main shape. Uh, looking if I wanna turn on symmetry or not. Okay, looking at it dead on, we're gonna make it this a little bit shorter. And looking at the side view, we're gonna make this a little bit longer. Tweak our main shape. So this is the main piece we're going to be working from. Now we are going to go under the geometry tab, turn on Dynamesh, increase the resolution a whole bunch to something we can use. There, and you can see that we jumped to a, a million point two uh, polygons. So that's already a lot, but it's going to give us um, a very clean look. Okay, so now we're going to make our first uh, cut inside our main piece. So we're going to jump at the subtool right below this box. And we are going to make a little cut inside our model. We're going to turn transparency on so we can see what we're doing. So we're going to scale this in a little bit. And then we're going to move it down so we have an all, we're looking for an even spacing all around. That should do it. Now we're going to scale this to be bigger than the piece we are, we are working on to make sure we have a very clean cut. And that, that's the trick. So now we're going to go under the subtool palette and we're going to click on the little icon there. And that's going to allow us to make a subtraction. We're going to jump to the previous subtool, the, our main subtool. We're going to hit merge down, click OK, and we are going to make a selection in the void and the empty space to redynamish it. And since we said we wanted to subtract the, the previous subtool, it's going to remove that. And that's, that's the main trick we're going to be using to create our um, hard, hard sculpt. We're going to take this new box and we're going to tilt it 45 degrees just to make sure it's a very geometric, very, just to make sure it makes sense. So 40, 45 degree angles are good. Very sci-fi. We're going to move this into position. Just to be sure, I am going to reset my pivot to the center. Then I'm going to go under Modify Topology and I'm going to hit Mirror and Weld once I figure out which axes I want. So 
Y wasn't the good one was Z. I wanted a mirror along Z. So I give it a couple of try. Still haven't, uh, still can't guess right away. So we're going to set it to subdivide, then go back to our main subtool, merge down, redyne the mesh, and that's going to subtract this. And we're nearly done. So we are where we have this nice little shape. It could be anything. What matters is that it's a hard surface. We're gonna add a little bit more detail just to add some interest. 45 degree, we're gonna add a little bit of a chamfer up there, up top. Decide how much chamfer I want. This should do. Um, you can only mirror from one side to the other inside of a ZBrush uh, core. So I thought I was on the wrong side, but I had the back view, not the front view. So I was okay. Because you don't want to be on the right side. You want to be on the left side before you hit mirror and weld. But since I'm on the back view, I'm on the good side. So mirror and weld. And then we are going to hit that little sub icon, go back to the main sub tool, merge down. Hit OK, redyne the mesh, and that is going to subtract this, this piece from our main piece, and that's it. That's our little, um, that's our little piece, the little piece we wanted to model. Something very generic could be any part of a gun or any part of any sci-fi piece ever. We're gonna duplicate it just so we have a piece of comp so we can compare it. And you can see that's 1.6 million uh, polygons. And that's a lot. That's not a huge amount, but that's a lot. And if you add all the uh, little pieces together, it can add up. So we are going to now use the Z remesher option that we have now access to inside of ZBrush Core. And that's going to recreate the topology of, a mo of our model, trying to match it as, as close as it can. And hopefully, uh, give us something we can uh, use. It's uh, quite a bit of uh, geometry, 1.6. So it takes a little bit time. And there you have it. So you can see there's a bit of warping going on. And that might not be as uh, clean looking as you wanted uh, since it's creating our geometry. But if we turn uh, dynamic on, dynamic subdiv on, and we increase the smoothing uh, subdivisions, try turning flat sub in subdiv, but it didn't look nice. And you can see we have a very, very clean looking model in a couple of seconds. And it's instead of being Instead of being uh, 1.6 million, now it's just 15,000 polygons. And that is something very usable. So, yeah, now we have, we can use dynamic subdiv to leave it as is and just have something that looks very clean but is very low poly. So it's going to be very light on your computer. It's going to be very easy to work with. Or, uh, we can hit apply under dynamic subdiv tab and have it turned into a subdivision workflow. Here I'm going to, I move to the side our previous model, the OG uh, model we created. And you can see that the um, original uh, Dynamesh model is a lot sharper. So that's the downside. If you use the Z remesher option, you your model softens a bit. But it's both, um, it can be a positive or a negative um, because if you were to bake this model, uh, it would be easier and would look nicer if you used um, the dynamic subdiv option um, because um, normals don't like sharp angles. So having that soft bevel all around is a plus if you're baking textures. Um, if you look at, at it at a, from a certain distance, it it looks perfectly okay. And unless you wanted really, really, really sharp angles that 
would hurt someone in real life so you rarely have that sharp of an angle uh, but if you wanted to keep that sharp angle the previous option is always there for you you can always use that um, that dynamesh option it's it's just a now we have options options we didn't have before and um, if you turn it into a subdivision uh, workflow if you're hitting apply uh, you can use your uh, sculpting tools and you can sharpen all these uh, creases. So you, you you have options now that we didn't have before. And now you're also you're looking at it side by side. So it, you might you might you're really seeing how sharp uh, one is compared to the other. But if we didn't have um, a point of reference, uh, you, you couldn't tell. And if you're working on anything stylized, uh, the the Z remesher. What the Z remesher option gives you is is great. Uh, it's not perfect, but if it, if you needed something perfect, uh, maybe uh, this is not the way to go. But if you were uh, working on uh, sculpting minis, if you're into making miniatures uh, that you wanted to 3D print, uh, the um, the Z uh, the Z remesher option will, would would look great. On a miniature um, and it's going to be easier for you to work with it's going to give you a uh, cleaner uh, topology it's going to allow you to use a uh, different kind of workflow um, all kinds of options you have now access to uh, using that method that we didn't have before if you need very very sharp angles um, I would keep stick to the previous method of using uh, Dynamesh that gives you the cleanest cut but if you are working on anything that is stylized if you have a lot a lot a lot of assets um, a lot of sub tools um, just have a look at it try it uh, here I'm going to make a generic um, barrel uh, just to make a, a pipe, a pipe with a hole in it. So we have another example of what we can do and what results we, we can have. And you'll see the same thing. It's not the, um, the geometry is not perfect, uh, but it's more than usable and it's going to be way lighter on your computer. It's going to be easier to manage. Um, it's going to be easier to uh, 3D print. It's going to, there are a lot of benefits to uh, losing a bit of uh, resolution, uh, a bit of sharpness um, for that uh, workflow. So you can create anything now with all, if you look at all the previous videos I did on the, on the subject, you could create anything now uh, roughly inside of uh, ZBrush Core and you can now Z remesh them to be uh, more efficient. And you're losing a bit of definition, but it's also um, sculpting topology now. So you're you're still you're still inside of uh, ZBrush Core. You could still sculpt on the uh, on the new model you've created. So if you needed to make it sharper, you could use the pinch tool, the hard brush tool. You could you could clean it up, uh, is what I'm saying. So uh, new options, uh, new options are good. Um, so yeah, previously we were stuck with. Uh, the Dynamesh method for creating uh, geometry and now we have more options so it's a it's a good thing and yeah that's uh, I'm gonna wrap things up for this video uh, I'll leave the video playing in the background so you can see the end result uh, you'll see it's uh, more more or less the same thing you have um, something very usable very clean that you can always work on later and that it's going to be instead of two and 1.5 million, it's going to be like 5,000 uh, polygons. So uh, very useful. And that's going to wrap things up for me. Uh, I hope you found this useful and I'll see you guys in the next one.